Okay, so Be'ezras Hashem, we're going to begin the second shear, and the final shear on the tefillah of Kigana. And just to apologize, I'm having some sort of an allergic reaction with my eye, so I, uh, I apologize for the, the startling the startling nature of it. And so, okay, here we go. So we described in the first in the first chilek of Kigavna that Kigavna is a revolution of sorts. It's a trans transference of the power of spirituality from the upper realms where we tend to assume the most important things take place down to the lower realms, which we typically relegate to places that are devoid of spiritual activism or Kadusha or the ability to be Megamal Yichud of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And suddenly we find that in truth, the elevated unity that will be revealed above is dependent upon and revealed from within the unification that takes place below. And so what we have entering into this space of Shabbos, entering out of the changing colors of the week into the singularity of Shabbos Kodesh, that point of Birchas Sagomel, of realizing that the end of the week is a moment to recognize that, oh my goodness, how in the world did I survive this week? That was the institution of the of the capital of Hodu, that a person was meant to see themselves as if I have just traveled throughout this traumatic river with waves and being capsized and this and that and all of the different colors of experience of this week. And I've come into a place of Shabbos and the only thing I can do is say Bir Chasagoymo to recognize that it's only through HaKadosh Baruch Hu, only through the ability that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has gave me to survive this week, both spiritually, emotionally, mentally, intact as an individual, is all a, a chesed gamor. It's the Indian of Goimel, which is the gam zula toiva, because the entire week is a world of gams. The gam, the gam, the gam, the gam. There's so many different iterations of experience, this color and that color and this color and that color. Kigavna all of the different colors. And there's so many moments where a person has to say, Gamze, this also, Gamze, Gamze, this thing also. The week is comprised of a million, it's a minefield of Gams, of this and that, and this and that, and more and more than what you thought was possible, and more of it. And comes Arab Shabbos, a person is making Birchas Agoimel, they're recognizing that every single Gam was something that could bring me to a place of Gam Ki Eilich Begeit Salmavas, that I'm walking again in the shadow of death. I'm walking again in a, a space of shadows and colors that assault my consciousness and that dislodge me from my sturdiness and avoid this Hashem. And I'm able to transform every moment of Gam Ki Eilich Begeit Salmavas into the secret of Lo Irara Ki Ati Imadi, that there's nothing to fear because you are with me. Lo Irara Ki Ati Imadi, I'm not going to be afraid because of the Indian of Lo, because of the 31 hours of Shabbos Kodesh, the Shabbos Kodesh, and the aspect of Lo, which is the Hasaga, which gives us the ability to grasp what we can't grasp by way of not engaging with it. The cessation from activity to realize that we can never engage with activity enough to arrive at the place we truly want to get to, because the deepest secret in the world is that we can't grasp Pakadish Baruch Hu except by way of Shlilas, except by way of negation, Ein Sof, that the human being can never actually grasp That's the secret of the Aliyos of Shabbos. And so, Gam Ki Eilich Begeit we enter into a place of Gam, of all of these different experiences where we're making Bircha Sagoimel, where we have to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu for helping us survive in this week. And at that point, what we're saying is, Lo Irara Ka'ati Imadi, I'm not going to be afraid. Why? Ki'ati Imadi, what does it mean that you are with me? What does it mean that you're with me in this moment? It means Lo, it means the 31 hours of Shabbos Kodesh. And so as we enter into that transitionary point where the week bleeds into Shabbos Kodesh and all of the different colors of experience have now unified together to really ask ourselves the question of, can we do it? How did we do it? How are we able to do it? So that's when we say Hodu, and that's when we're experiencing the process of Kigavna, which is revealing that all of the processes, all of the experience in the worlds of separation, in the worlds of Bria, Yitzhir, and Asiya, all of them, Bali Yoitzim and Aklal, are there to invigorate the Yichud, are there to reveal a deeper element of Yichud, that the Yichud emerges specifically from the Tachtoinim, the Dira B'Tachtoinim. This is where HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted us to be. We carried out the Shlichus this week that no other creature, no Malach was willing to take on because they couldn't begin to imagine that process. They can't speak Targum. They can't understand what it means to be lost in translation. And therefore, they can't have that mitzvah of Shnai Mikrov Yechet Targum is bringing the translation and the colors of the week back into Lashon HaKodesh. But what we see in Kigav is that just as it's meant to be unified above, so too will it only be unified through the process of below. Like we know in Pirka Derbi Lazar, it says the Kigav Netzvila, the Chiklilaka, the Zohar, this is the secret of Hashem Echad Echad, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is one and his name is one. And Hayahu Vishmo 
Hayu Bilvad, and that he and his name existed alone. How do we have a name of a Kaddish Baruch Hu that exists prior to the creation of anything else? The entire Tachlis of a name is for those who can receive that name to be able to respond to that name and to call out that name. But the term Kol Yitzir Nevra, that he should be king before anything is created. But the secret is that the Tachla Sabria is to reveal, so to speak, this element of a Kaddish Baruch Hu's name, his Shemo, his Shemo, which is the same gematria as Ratzon, is 346. Because the revelation of a Kaddish Baruch Hu's name, the Hiskalis of the Kayach HaGvul, the revelation of the potential towards limitation that exists by way of non-existence within the infinite, without any limit, which is the secret of the Kayach HaGvul, Bibilti Gvul, as Rabbeinu Azriel speaks about, the entire Tachla of Bria is to allow that to unfold and when the power of limitation unfolds from within the unlimited, it thereby reveals the truest power of the unlimited which is what we mean when we say that the secret of unity above will only take place through the secret of unity below, which is the secret of Dira B'tachtoinim that when we're able to elevate that lowest part of existence, that prat that color, that experience, that's going to reveal the deeper level of secrets we also said that these two levels of Shabbos above and Shabbos below, the unity of HaKadosh Baruch Hu above and the unity of HaKadosh Baruch Hu low, the secret of Hashem and the secret of His name. This is also referred to as the secret of Echad and Echad. Above, it's unity. It's pure unity. It's not a secret. A secret implies that it can't be grasped. It can't be fully revealed. It's not a secret because it's being whispered and only revealed to those who are politically situated well enough to be zochet to hear the secrecy. It's not a din in the politics of secrecy. It's not that there's some who are worthy of hearing it and some who are unworthy of hearing it. Here, it's the secret of the soid, as the Vilna Gon describes in his parish on Safed Yitzniusa and elsewhere in Sefer Yitzira, as the Leshem explains as well, that the secret of soid and Rabbi explains this, and the Baal Tani explains this, and the Rashash explains it, and the Taurus Chacham explains this, as well as the Ramchal, and the Baal Asulam, all of the Tzadikim Amitim, they reveal that, what does it mean that something is a sod? It's not a secret because it hasn't been revealed yet. It's a secret because even once it's revealed, it will continue to be a secret because the content of the secret itself is the secret, meaning to say that it can't ever fully be grasped because the secret of all things is that it can't be fully grasped. And therefore, it will always remain in the sense of a secret, something that I know, perhaps, deeply, intuitively, that lelibi galisi, it's revealed to my heart, but le, le fuma lo galisi, but I can't reveal it to my mouth because it's a secret to me. I can't tell you what it really is. I can only describe what it looks like, what I what I feel the experience to be. And that's the secret of the secret of Shabbos, Raza the Shabbos. So there's the secret of unity, and then there's there's unity itself, and then there's the secret of unity. There's Shabbos itself, and there's the secret of Shabbos. There's Hashem Echad, and then there's Raza the Echad. So like we saw in this transvaluation of terms, theoretically, we would assume that pure unity or pure Shabbos is ultimately going to be higher than the secret of unity or the secret of Shabbos, because secret implies that I don't have a full access to it. But here we see that it's really the Raza de Shabbos. It's the secret of Shabbos. It's the secret of Achdus, which is going to reveal the deepest revelation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because it's those who are willing to sit when things still remain the secret prior to revelation. When Hashem reveals everything, it's not going to be a Chiddush to want to be Mavutl B'tachlis Habitl to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's going to be a Davar Pasha. That's going to be a natural consequence of Hashem's revelation, but to be accessing that recognition, to be tasting Oilam Haba in Oilam Hazad, to be tasting the future in the present itself, to be tasting the secret of unity within the secret while it's still a secret, to taste Shabbos while it's still a secret of Shabbos, that's the biggest Chiddush, and that's going to be the secret of us preparing the chair, the throne for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and only then HaKadosh Baruch Hu ready and, and willing to sit on that throne by Ezra Sashem. So now, moving on to the second chilek. Raza de Shabbos, ihi Shabbos de ischadaz, raza de echad. So the secret of Shabbos is that it's Shabbos and that it's unified in the secret of unity. So here, again, we have the hyper-focus on raza de Shabbos, on the secret of Shabbos and the raza de echad. Once in the first part of Kigavna, we've established that what appears to be more insignificant is in truth the most significant, and that what appears to be lower is in truth revealed to be higher, and that which appears to be rooted in human effort is is in truth seen as the key to the entire process of a Kaddish Baruch Hu's revelation. So now we can say, okay, once we've showed you that the secret of Shabbos and the secret of Achdus, which means to be caught up in the lower realms where it's not clarified and not revealed fully, but rather still in the secret of a secret, which is the Gematria of 208, which is the Gematria of Yitzchak, which appears to be Choshech, but in truth is a deep and profound light, 
right now we can begin to talk about the value of the Raz of the Shabbos and the secret of Echad, meaning once we've established that the secret of these things is higher than that actual thing that is revealed because of the self-sacrifice it takes to engage in them when they're still in a stage of secrecy. So now we're going to focus on how these are the mechanisms that draw out and reveal the deepest light of Shabbos itself. Raz of the Shabbos, the secret of Shabbos, Ihi Shabbos, which is the feminine aspect of Shabbos, which is the worlds of separation, which is the worlds of Bri, Yitzir, and Asiya. I also love to think about in terms of this, and I believe I may have seen it in Rav Shlomo Latorsky in the Malchus Shlomo, but the Raza the Shabbos, you want to know the secret of Shabbos? You want to know the secret? E Shabbos. It's that it's Shabbos. You can't explain what Shabbos is. A person has to taste Shabbos. A person has to feel Ta'amuru Uki Toifu. A person has to come to experience the secret of Shabbos by realizing that the deepest secret of Shabbos itself is that it's Shabbos. Nothing else, nothing more. It doesn't mean self-negation in the light of unity. It doesn't mean meditation. It doesn't mean mystical speculation. It doesn't mean transcendental experience. What it simply means is to be in Shabbos, when a person realizes it's Shabbos, that's the deepest secret of Shabbos. Raza, the Shabbos, you want to know what's the secret of Shabbos? Tell me the secret. The secret of Shabbos is that it's Shabbos. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. It is what it is. Shabbos itself is the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It saturates all things. So Raza the Shabbos is Shabbos. The secret of Shabbos is that it's Shabbos. This Chad, this Barat the Echad, that has unified itself in the secret of Achdus, which means that as we're entering into Shabbos, as we're prior to Shabbos in the secret of the Tesefa Shabbos, which is Mincha and Erev Shabbos, which the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh says, and the Semach Tzedek brings this down, was the most halig zman of his entire week. It was the highest level of Yichud, and at that point it was specifically that the Baal Shem Tov HaKadosh would be up in the Olam Masa'el Yonim, but he would be dealing with people down here in their mundane, day-to-day -day practical issues, because that zman of, of Mincha Shabbos, of Aliyah Sa'ilam Masa'el Shabbos, was the Iker time that the Tzaddik would reveal that not only am I above, but I'm below as well in the secret secret of Aniva Ayin or Abayas and Aliyah, a house with an attic, as Rabbi Nachman describes. Now, the tachlis of the tzaddik, the tachlis of a yid entering into Shabbos is to be above and below at once because we're elevating that which is below back upwards. And the only way to bring it back upwards is to have engaged it once it was below. So once we have engaged in the secret of unity, Lemishre al razad the echad, and we want to draw upon ourselves the secret of echad, so once we've unified the worlds of separation, once we've engaged with gathering together all of the different gavanim, all of the different moments of the week, and we've gathered them together, we've allowed them to coalesce into one vision of what this week was, which forces me to say, Hodu Hashem, which forces me to make birchas agomel, at that point we are ready to draw down the new lights of Shabbos. What we've done so far is, we have prepared the worlds of separation to become a seat, to become the revelation point at which HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveals an even further deepening of emuna and Yichud, because now that which appears to have been disparate and broken and separate and fragmented is now going to be revealed to be the very throne that HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself is revealed upon. Now, in terms of the substructure of what's happening here, during the week, right, we know that there's the world of Atzilus and there's the worlds of separation, Bri, Yitzir, and Asiya, and they have fundamentally different halachos to them, at least on a revealed level, as we're studying at length in the writings of the Leshem Shavu Bachaloma. And so the world of Atzilus is a world of absolute unity. It's the secret of Ihu Vigamayu Vichiyu Chad Behon, which is the Raza de Mayim Nusa, the secret of abundant and absolute unity. That's not Raza de Echad, that's not Raza de Shabbos, that's Shabbos and that's Echad. In the world of Atzilus, Lo Yigru Chara, there's no negativity, there's no concealment. In the worlds of separation, which are symptoms and post traumatic symptoms, so to speak, of the Shvira Sakhalim and the Tsimsum, we encounter the three tiered world of separation. Each level is more concealed than the next. One is concealed in the method of thinking, one is concealed in the method of feeling, and one is concealed in the method of doing, but all three of these elements are referred to as the soldiers of Malchus Datsilus, because they emerge obviously from the world of unity, but they no longer bear the marks of external unification. And our work during the week is to engage with those worlds, to be Mavare Birurim, to be Ma'ala Denitsosos, to clarify and rectify that which can be refined and elevated through Tfilos of Shachras, Mincha Marev, at all of the different things that we do or in our basic levels of functioning. And then 
And then we're able to clarify and elevate those worlds of separation. The thing that gives life to the worlds of separation, Kav during the week is the Malchus of Atzilus, which is Yoyred into the worlds of Briyei Tzir and Atsiyah. This is what we refer to as Golus HaShchina, that the Shchina Kav which is the Tachlis of all things, which is the Hisgalus of the Ratzon HaKadosh Baruch Hu and every ounce of things. HaKadosh Baruch Hu allows the Malchus to Atzilus to break through the separation into the worlds of separation and rest there and find itself stuck there. Kolzman that Klaus are all in Gullis. And every mitzvah that a person does, and every moment of Amun, and every moment of Bitachon is Be'emes, Be'emes, Be'emes for the sake of elevating the Shechina from that state of captivity, come Yachol, back up to its place of freedom, which is what's referred to as the freeing of the Basmelech, as Rabbi Nachman describes in the first uh, story of Avedas Basmelech, and as the Zayra Kadr says as follows, that man that one who has the ability of slaying the serpent has the ability of redeeming the princess. The slaying of the serpent is what takes place through all of our work and all of our toil and all of the different colors and the nachas hasieni of yesh va'ayin and different voices and different contemplations and different seductions that the individual goes through during the week. At this point, right, we're clarifying ourselves from this place and we're allowing malchus to elevate itself back up from the worlds of Briyat Zira Nasiya in order for for all of the worlds and all of our awareness to elevate back up into a space of Shabbos, which is seeing the world from a different perspective. This is the description of Aliyah Sa'olamos. This is why we shower with hot water. This is why people go to the mikvah. This is why people cut their nails. Everything about Shabbos is a preparation to allow Malchus of Atzilus, which is our recognition of godliness and my sense of godliness in this world that has remained stuck and confined and confounded within the dizzying space of separation and to bring it back up into a place of pure unity where we can then reflectively look back retroactively and realize how all of the separation of the previous week was just another opportunity to reveal more yichud. So that's what we're going to be looking at now. We're clarifying, refining the malchus of atzilus that has been stuck in the worlds of Bri Yitzir and Asiyah. We're looking differently at the experience of the week. We're looking differently at all of the changing colors so that we can have an experience of aliyosa olamos, as that Rizal says. Zakta Balatanya, where is this aliyosa olamos? We talk all Shabbos about the elevation of worlds to the degree that the external reality should shift. If we're down here stuck in a physical realm and there's this transference from below back to above through all of the effort that took place below, then theoretically it should express itself on the most physicalized and most materialized level. And so the Helig of Balatanya says as follows. He says that Be'emnes, the Aliyah Sa'ulamus is taking place within the individual. The experience of Aliyah Sa'ulamus is a shift in how I look at reality. As we're going to see, it's my decision to be happy on Shabbos. That's the Aliyah Sa'ulamus. It's my willingness to daven, to eat properly, to feel differently. As Rabbi Nachman says in Torah, Yud Zayin in Lakut Maran Chelak Beis, where he quotes from the Rish Chachma. Not only does he quote from the Rish Chachma, but he says that everybody should learn Shar Ahava in the Rish Chachma about Shabbos. And not only should everybody learn Shar Ahava in the Rish Chachma about Shabbos, but each and every thing there mentioned about Shabbos in the words of the Rish Chachma is an Inyan Bifnei Atzmo, meaning to say that if you see three ideas there, it's not that you have to do one, two, and three in order for them to be valuable. But even if you do one, irrespective of whether you do two or three, one is valuable in and of itself. It's the secret of unity that's being revealed in each and every part, in spite of the fact that a person might not have the accessibility to the whole. That's the secret of Shabbos, as we're going to see. And so Rabbi Nachman there says that a person has to be happy on Shabbos. A person has to see good on Shabbos. Ah, I can't force myself. I can't compel myself into an emotional state. If I'm meant to experience an aliyah, then create an aliyah. If I'm meant to leave the stuckness of this world, then elevate the world. Elama, what the Balatanya is saying and what Rabbi Nachman is saying and what all of our tzaddikim are saying is that it's a choice to see the world differently. That's what Shabbos is. It's a chiyuv, as Chazal have already stated, to see as if all of my work is still done, as if my physical work, as if my spiritual work is all done. It's not a statement of fact, but it's a decision to act as if. It's an entrance into an imaginative palace of Shabbos, a palace in time that I am free from being chased by all of the existential and antagonizing anxieties of the day-to-day -day week. And that's the choice here, as we're going to see. The Mishrei al the Echad, that a person wants to draw upon themselves the secret of Echad. They want to reveal the unity from within disunity. Slice of the Malay Shabsa, slice of the Malay Shabsa, the Mephorshim point out, is the Mincha of Erev Shabbos. We're not talking about Kabbalah Shabbos yet. We're not talking about Marav yet. We're talking about the secret of Tesefe Shabbos. That's man of Mibayin Hashmashos, where our Kaddish Baruch Hu was Kichut HaSa'ara. He didn't have to wait, but human beings have to wait, and we have to be Makdim. We have to bring Shabbos into the week, which also, as the Lubavitcher Rebbe pointed out, and Sadiqim point out, the Vilna 
Gaon Nuleshem point out as well, and they go through the calculations of the years and everything, that the Iker Mitzvah of our generation, or the Iker Mitzvah of Ikbis of the Mashiach, is, is Tayameha, is tasting the light of Shabbos on Erev Shabbos, of drawing Shabbos into the mundanity of the week, so that we can then come out of Shabbos with the recognition that the mundanity of the week is also Shabbos. Hayom Yom Rishon B'Shabbos, Hayom Yom Sheni B'Shabbos. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to be Makdim Shabbos before itself and be Mamshech Shacharis after itself. And so this secret of the Mincha Tfila, which is the Aliyah Sa'ilamos, the beginning of the clarifications, is how we prepare ourselves. So Tzloi Sadamale Shabbos and the Davening at the beginning at the very entry point of when Shabbos enters in, the is Chadus Kursaye Yakira Kadisha Baraza De Echod, because at this point we have now unified the chair of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the chair of his glory and all of its holiness in the secret of Echad. The chair of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Kisei HaKavod, is the world of Bria, the worlds of separation. That's the place where Malachim of Shaykhis, that's the Kisei HaKavod, that's the Shairish of Nishma, Yisrael Kav Yachol, above and beyond the Malachim. But what we're talking about is the refinement of Malchus of Atzilus that was Yoyred into the worlds of Bria Yitzhir and Asiya. And we've come to a place where now we're ready to elevate everything from the world of Bria which was the highest point of the week, back up to the level of Atzilus, back up to the place of Aliyah Sa'ilamus, where everything is going to be misached. And so we're saying that the chair, the throne of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, through which HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to reveal himself, which is why it's Yakira, it's Kavod. It's Kavod because Kavod is only Shaykh to somebody outside. Clothing, as Chazal tell us, are called Begadim. The worlds of Bri Yitzir and Asiya are Levushim Kavyachol to the Achdus of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that's Mizkal in the world of Atzilus, which is why it's called the Kisei HaKavod, because the whole Indian of HaKadosh Baruch Hu being Yoshev ala Kisei Kavyachol, like an Adama Yoshev Babayas Kavyachol, is in order to reveal his glory in all of the worlds of separation. For Saye Yakira, Yakira, the language of Yakar, is Haitzi Yakar Mezoylel, it's coming from a place of disgusting things and transforming them into beautiful things. We've already established his holy chair, his chair of honor, in the secret of Echad, in the worlds of separation. And we have prepared it in order so that the Malchus, the holiness of Malchus, the Shrinta Akadosha, is prepared to elevate itself. Our experience in this world is prepared to be elevated back up to a way of looking at things that allows me to see Akadosh Baruch in my life. To draw down the light of Malchus, which has already been hidden within the Gullus of the worlds of separation, which is the secret of Malchus to Atzilus. Kad Ayil Shabsa Ihis Yechadis Vis Parshas Misitra Achra. When Shabbos begins to enter, that Shechina HaKadosha, the, the revelation of a Kaddish Baruch Hu in this world, the revelation of a Kaddish Baruch Hu through my eyes, my encounter with the Rabbi Nishalaylam, my sense of self, my sense of Ani, my sense of encounter, that thing which has been stuck in Gullus for so long throughout the entire week, that Rav Lach Sheves, Kabacha, it's been sitting far too long in the Valley of Cheers, uh, and we're being prepared to elevate ourselves up. That thing, that sense, that perception, that identification with the Shechina Begolus that we've experienced throughout the entire week is what's getting ready to elevate. We're getting ready to elevate it by how? By davening to HaKadosh Baruch Hu about it. That it's when Shabbos enters, there's a unification, and there is a separation from the other side. The Sitra Achra is the concealing factor that we encounter in this world, the things that make things so heavy, the heaviness and the burdensome nature of what it means to be a person in this world. And again, it should be as sweet as imaginable, but we all go through it on one level or another. And each person who needs those tikkunim should have those tikkunim, but what we're doing is we're clarifying, we're removing the sitra achra, all of the incidental, insignificant, inessential elements of experience that have kind of covered over and scabbed over the innermost essential point is now being removed. We're slowly but surely refining experience to the degree that we can let go of the character defects and the thinking distortions and distorted ways of thinking and the defense mechanisms and all of the things and the resentments that have kept us stuck all of the week. We're ready to let go of that. We're ready to isprashas mi sitra achra. All of those sheaths, all of those shields that have covered over Malchus during the six days of the week are now being removed. And all negativity and all judgments are being removed from it. They're going away. We're clarifying things and we're finding things back to a point of absolute clarity. 
not absolute clarity, but refining the worlds of separation to the degree that we're now ready to see it for what it is, to see ourselves as being the vehicle of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's light down here and getting ready to own our role and realize that it can't be revealed up there until we cleanse ourselves down here. The Chol Dinin Mesabrimine, and we get rid of all of the Dinim, which is the Dina de Malchusa Dina, which is the secret of Dina, which is Dalit Yun Nun Aleph, which is Osios of Adnas, which is the shame of HaKadosh Baruch Hu that's associated with the Malchus that is Right into the world of separation. We're cleansing all of it. We're no longer stuck in those dinim when we're not allowing ourselves to get stuck in them. And she remains alone in a state of unification of holy lights, meaning the malchus datsilus that is ready to ascend out of the worlds of separation, revealing that the worlds of separation are a state of mind that we need to elevate back up to the state of mind of atsilus within ourselves through the holy light, the nihiru kadisha, the secret of anahar, hayoitzimi. Eden of a nahar flowing light, the isatras become itrin the malka gabi malka kadisha. And not only that, not only have we survived, not only have we elevated ourselves back out of a space of separation, back out of a space of, of concealment and distortion, but we have forced that space of distortion to give us crowns and jewels, beautifications, the itatras become itrin, taisefes kishut, a, a, an additional adornment placed on a Kaddish Baruch's unity. Because in the world of Atsilas, in the world of absolute unity, in the world of pure Shabbos without the secret of Shabbos or pure unity without the secret of unity, there's no need for it. There's no possibility for tachshit and there's no possibility for beautification or making perfection more beautiful. Perfection can only become more perfect and the supplement of perfection can only take place by way of the descent into what appears to be imperfection, thereby revealing that all of the elements are imperfection are only there to refine perfection, to beautify perfection. But Kama Itshun Gabimalka Kadisha, we're bringing up all of these Kishutin. How are Kishutin made? Where does the jewelry come from? It comes from the Evan and the stones that are inanimate, lower than vegetation, lower than the animal kingdom, lower than the human being. But it's specifically from that place, from the Avni Hamakom, from that broke down place, that we have the ability of Evan Masu Habanim, that which was despised during the week, we have the ability to elevate back up and show not only have we been able to survive the worlds of separation, not only have we elevated the worlds of separation back into the secret of unity, not only have we come to understand that it's only through the worlds of separation, the Rabbanish Lailam, that you have the ability to reveal yourself above, so to speak, but we have forced the worlds of separation, we have taken the opportunity that you have sent us down into the trauma of these worlds, and we have refined them, and we're going to make you more beautiful, Kav Yachon. we're going to reveal your unity even more, we're going to Stand sturdily here and say, Here you found also a Kaddish Baruch Hu. This Hatra become a itch in the Gabi Malka Kadisha and the Shrina Akadosha Malchus of Atsilis, which is rooted in the entire Tachlis of Bria, which is the Malchus de Inso Kavyacho, which is the Malchus of Gnuz Beradlo, which is the secret of David Malka Mashicha, that it's ready to elevate itself back up to become unified with the king, to become unified with the expression of a Kaddish Baruch Hu and Atsilis, thereby revealing the secret of unity that takes place throughout distortion and concealment below, is in fact going to drive the reality of unity which takes place above. The whole Shultane Rug Zinumare de Dina Kula Arkin, the Isabru Mine, and all of the agents of anger and rage and Mare de Dina, and all of the officers of judgment, all of them are dispersed and all of them run away from that place. The, the expression of Din, the expression of Gvura in this world, in the mundanity of the week, is the ease towards anger and rage and resentment and the feeling that things don't go my way and that if it doesn't go my way, it's an affront to me and that I should have my way. And anytime I don't have my way or I feel loss of control, the attempt at regaining control when I have no control is to express myself more intensely through a state of anger. All of that goes away. It's calmness. Menuchas emesha atarot seba. The tachlis, we said, is to reach a place of arichas af, of taking a deep breath. The opposite of a deep breath, says Rabbi Nachman in Tarek Kufi Tess in Chelek Aleph, is charonaf, is anger. So memela, when we reveal a unity and a menucha in the world, memela, anger runs away. Rug zinumari dedina, they all go away. Kula arkin v'sabri minei v'leishul and there's no other possibility of there being any other true leadership in existence. It's revealed that all of the worlds of separation were in truth vehicles of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and it's only Achdos, that even the world down here, the Raza de Echad and the Raza de Shabbos is indicative and revelatory of the of the true expression of Echad. And the faces, and the faces, and our face, and our Panim, and our experience is refined and is illuminated with upper 
elevated lights, just as Malchus, the, the Kadisha, elevates herself back up and is refined with that light, our faces begin to shine. Panim Chadashos Balakan. A person doesn't have to have Panim Chadashos by Sheva Brachos on Shabbos. Why? Because Shabbos itself is Panim Chadashos. That there's a shift on Shabbos when a person closes their eyes a little bit more, takes a little bit of a deeper breath, realizes the secrets of all that we've been discussing, at that point, the faces are illuminated. This atras latata ba'ama kadisha, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is now prepared to crown himself, to reveal his glory through the souls of his holy people down here below, through all of our distortion, all of our particularization, and all of the thickness and the colors that we've brought into Shabbos, it's specifically there that the illumination of the face is going to take place. The kulun mis ashrin benishmas and chadisen, and at this point, each and every person has the ability to uncover nishmas and chadasin, more of a capacity to engage, more of a capacity to do, more of a capacity to push forward, more of a capacity towards perseverance, more of a capacity towards kedusha, more of a capacity towards emunah and bitachon, nishmas and chadasin, a revelation of something that was hidden within me that I couldn't uncover until I had the koyach of Shabbos itself, and that as Chazal tell us, can only be uncovered with the recognition that this will not last forever, and therefore I have to throw myself into it with immediacy. And now we are prepared to allow ourselves to daven with Baruch Hu, to enter into the time of Mariv Bechad Vadinhir the Anpen. Not only with the secret of the illumination of the face, but the joy that comes from the illumination of the face, the joy that comes with the silent recognition that Rabbi Nishleilam, everything that you have sent me through, every aspect of my experience throughout this week, all of the different colors, every ounce of them are becoming the center point where you're going to crown yourself, where you're going to. To reveal yourself to Ezra Sashem. And with this, we enter into Shabbos with the secret of Kigavna, with the ability to take all of our different colors and move forward towards HaKadosh Baruch Hu and reveal HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the farthest place imaginable with his, our own selves. And when we can do that, we can understand the true secret of Kaman Shabbos. And then Ezra Sashem will continue with some Tfilos. We'll go into Avdal a little bit to see how this process is Nimshach throughout the week as well. Ezra Sashem.